Howdy guys, how's it going? So uh, we're coming out very late in the evening, only about an hour of sunlight left, but I mean that's uh, that's nothing new. But I just was going through my videos and uh, I, you know, a while back, uh, it's probably been, I don't know if it's been a year yet or not, um, but this is that spot where we've done that uh, stealth shelter build. Uh, I, I know last time before I left I demolished it um, for the most part, like all this wood and stuff is still here, but I knew this area was cleared out, so it would be a nice safe place to uh, use my inflatable sleeping pad. Um, I've got one of my ponchos that I've used a ton, like a ton of times. It's like an extra large poncho. We're going to use that as our shelter covering. Um, I got a newer, uh, smaller poncho that I'm going to use as my moisture barrier. I'll put a sleeping pad on top of that. Use the high speed daddy Wooby as our sleeping bag tonight. And then I've got a new alcohol stove, which uh, I, I used the alcohol, like a homemade alcohol stove, like one of the uh, tin can ones. I made one of those years ago. Um, like when I was probably like 13 or 14. Since then, I have not. So I'm gonna get this stuff pushed back. Uh, just double check, make sure there's nothing like too sharp or pointy, which there is like some briars around this area. Um, and then we'll figure out how we're gonna set our tarp up. Cause I don't want it to be just like right down on this. So I gotta crawl in like we did with that stealth shelter, which if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. So yeah, I'm gonna try to probably angle it this way. And then there's a sapling there. Um, and then I might have to run one corner, but at least this side would be really high up and open cause it's not gonna rain. Uh, just to keep the dew off of us. And uh, yeah, with all that said, let's take and get to it. And uh, if you're wondering, those clay pots are from our uh, shelter heaters that we made when we done that stealth uh, shelter build. And those work great. Um, I thought I'd leave those here because it was a lot easier to leave them than pack them out. This is uh, like family on land, so like it's, it was okay to leave this here. I don't remember that sapling, like it, that's how long it's been. That sapling wasn't in here when we first done this. And overall, this is actually a very lightweight setup. I was able to, I just put my poncho on the bottom because I got the other one on the interior. It definitely could get a bit breezy tonight, but uh, it's gonna be warmer than usual. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of signs of insects in this area, so I don't think we gotta worry about that. At least not yet. But that is right around the corner. And that's when the bug nets and the tents and the hammocks start coming out more. Yeah, it's actually, seems like the wind, or like, it's not supposed to be super windy, but definitely breezy. You know, easy breezy cover, girl. It's... Yeah, if I'd have thought, I would have brought a couple nails. Like, having a couple of uh, large gauge nails is never a bad idea to uh, throw in your pack, as long as you uh, tape them up and make sure they're, they won't poke a hole on anything. So we'll just rely on the tried and true juke twine, if I can find the right there it is. A simple square knot, and then we'll run it just a little tree right here. And then I went ahead and tied that corner right there over to that fallen uh, birch tree. Because I cut this tree down with an axe um, like probably two or three years ago. And I tied that corner because when we went to the sapling, if I was to try to pull the tension this way, it would have come too far. But right here, I'm to make sure y'all can see what I'm doing. There's been a lot of aeroplanes flying around. What we're doing, the base of this should be plenty strong enough. I don't want to get it on these too much on these jagged pieces of wood from our build. Wait. Now we'll see if we can run this from this corner over here. If you're wondering, we're right here, kind of at the top of this small ridge. Um, and all that new growth right there and then right beyond that area was completely forested and then this right here is like new growth that has started to come back right behind it 
for a good ways, and we'll definitely take and do uh, do some shelter builds in there because there's plenty of uh, great stuff, and it needs to be thinned out anyways. Boom, and there we go. That is the setup that we are working with. I just took and ran a piece of jute twine from the hood up to a little sapling tree. And now I'm gonna get in there, go and get the bed stuff set up, and then we can get food on because I'm hungry for some homemade chili beans. And I did remember to bring hot sauce this time. So that's already gonna be a big, uh, a big plus to this trip. Oh yeah, and the new little poncho I got, it is a AUS Camo Tech, um, and I also got a uh, Gilly Soup poncho from them, which uh, we're going to be doing and using that for a couple stealth camp trip videos, whatever you want to categorize it as. But yeah, this one's not quite as big as, as this uh, poncho right here, but that's one reason I got it, because it packs down to a smaller form factor, so it's going to be our ground cloth. Pulling out a bunch of these little new sapling sprigs that have come up. They don't really pose any risk of poking a hole in anything, it's just annoying. Okay, there's our chili beans. Okay. We got our Gear Doctor sleeping pads. Can whip out the flex tail pump. Alrighty, we got that set up and situated. Not looking like there's anything that should poke a hole in it. Okay, yeah, so uh, this is going to be really nice. Whenever I was moving around right there, uh, I accidentally stepped on and snapped that line, and I just tried to, I pieced it back together, so that's why there's a little bit of sag right here now, but once again, not going to rain, so that's fine. I still have plenty of headroom up in here. But yeah, this is very comfortable. So uh, I'll go ahead and get my hot, I'll get that wooby out here in a second um, and just make sure we got everything situated. It wouldn't hurt to have staked this hammock out, I mean this, uh, smaller tarp out to the edges but since this area is confined and already kind of in a u shape we should be fine but i'm just wanting to hurry up and get to the, the chili beans Here is the stump where I chopped this tree down, you know, a while back. Um, and I just took and tried to flatten out a place right here where our alcohol stove can sit pretty level. Um, and like I said, this is the first time using this stove. It was made by Cubic, just like that wood stove uh, that I got, that titanium rack and then that titanium trowel. Um, it's got, I don't know what this little wire is for. I don't know if this is for, it just, oh, I bet it's probably just a way to keep track of these so you don't lose them whenever you're packing them in but we'll set that back there and then these go like this and sit on there i know we need to light it first um i know this bottle says 70 percent alcohol but this is 90 uh, percent alcohol and um it's got little i don't know how to show it. it's got little flow markers on the inside um and i'm not sure like what the, the burn time for this is so we're probably going to be burning this thing a lot longer than we need to just to heat up some food but I'm going to go to the two fluid ounce mark here. And it's got to drain through them. It looks like there's four interior holes. And that's what allows it to get to these outside ports, I would assume. I don't know if I need to give that a minute to uh, to do that or if that's even how this works. And the only thing is I've got my Vault Can uh, Bento lunchbox thing. And it's, you know, it's a larger vessel. So once that's on here, um, I'm sure it'll be very sturdy. However, it's going to be kind of a concentrated form of heat. So we'll have to keep stirring this bad boy. And these bottles do not come with uh, the stove, 
Um, these are just some that was laying around the house and I tested it, they don't leak. So I thought that was a nice little nifty thing. I also want to use one of these for olive oil from now on. But it is nice to have this stump to act as a little bit of a table here. Oh yeah, we probably need to light this so it can start burning. So it is lit, mainly in the center, but it'll probably take a bit for them ports to uh, get primed. And there's probably a way that I could have done that for this first use, but I didn't have time to uh, read up on this bad boy. I ain't gonna say I didn't have time, but I just, I didn't take the time. Boom. So right there is our bag of homemade chili beans. I don't want this to bust before I can get it in the thing. At the moment, this is the best way I know to transport this because obviously this doesn't have a seal on it because if it did, we wouldn't really be able to do this. There we go. Now it's starting to come out some of them side ports. Let's do this without dumping everything. Yeah, that thing's rocking and rolling now. Set this aside for a minute. I did not mean to throw it that far, but... That right there is our homemade chili bean deliciousness. I know that is a large quantity. Here to have too much and not enough. Oh, that's hot. Okay, let's bring it over, make that heat go around the left side if we can. Okay, yeah, maybe two ounces was a little too much. Just gonna have to keep this thing stirring because this thing's gotta be burning pretty hot. It seems like it's a lot more efficient than even carrying like the ISO, uh, isobutane canisters by weight. Because I mean, I know the rocket stove probably weighs just as much as, as this thing would. Um, maybe more. I mean, worst thing's titanium. It doesn't weigh anything. And yeah, I mean, this large bento box balances on that thing perfectly. So, I mean, you can put some, uh, some larger items. I mean, this is not a light, uh, meal. It's like, it's like, it's, it's pretty heavy. And I think where the flames, where they're like, the flames are so large, it's actually kind of heating this thing up more evenly than I thought it would. Okay, that right there is steaming hot. So I don't know if you can blow these out. No, that ain't gonna work. Okay, we're just gonna have to let that burn down. We could have also done it right here. That's actually a pretty flat spot. I just didn't see it because of those sticks that was poking off in the way. But this is the, at the very base of the tree that we are uh, sleeping in slash under. But now for the most important part, the hot sauce. This is the one we're going with. I absolutely love this one. It is very, very hot. So uh, if you're new to hot sauce, don't start with this one. <laughs> oh, I need to probably shake it up a little bit better first. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Oh, gotta feel it going in and coming out, you know. <laughs> Get that stirred up. Ooh, that'll wake you up, baby. <laughs> Truthfully, the number one reason I love hot sauce it has nothing to do with like looking tough. I love the flavor, but probably my most favorite thing is is it just may it opens my sinuses up so much and just drains everything out. So I kind of look at it as a uh, medicinal piece of your kit. <laughs> I'll go get my water though.
And yeah, it's still February, so don't forget to uh, go check out the uh, the video about the uh, Vault Can Titanium Canteen Mess Kit. I think I just said that right. Uh, giveaway because that'll be in that'll be uh, commencing at the end of the month, the end of February. This is 2023. In case you see this video years from now. Well, guys, I'm going to take and sit here and finish enjoying this amazing hot and spicy chili and uh, empty out my sinuses off camera because that's probably that's pretty unappealing. You know, blowing snot rockets isn't uh, probably, you know, something YouTube's algorithm would be too happy with. But <clears throat> it is very good that you got to just enjoy the uh, the slight pain of it for the, for the flavor, you know. But there's really nothing else left to do. I'm going to take and uh, just get things situated. Um, and I guess I'll probably see you guys back at um, at bedtime. Because <clears throat> I just got to watch and wait and see. I let that alcohol stove burn down. It's still rocking and rolling. Uh, all right, guys. So it's definitely uh, it's cooled off a bit. But I think this is about as... Uh, it's about as cool as it's going to be getting for the evening. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, crawl into bed. And make sure everything's fully situated. Um, because of this debris and everything, and because I don't want to get my sleeping pad too close to this, my feet's probably going to be sticking out just a tad. So I think for that, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to take and leave my, my muck boots on. Because the other thing too is uh, this wooby is pretty water repellent, but um, it would end up uh, there's a good chance like even if I take and fold it under, have my feet on it, uh, like on top of the flap that I fold over, um, it's pretty easy to uh, have your feet poke out the end of the night. And waking up with cold feet isn't fun. Plus, it makes sure that I have plenty of. Uh, Plenty of stuff to cover my head with. And like usual, I mean, we're in the mountains and this spot is kind of, you know, has a slope to it. So I don't really need a pillow. Because, I mean, I tend to sleep on my back anyway. So uh, with all that said, guys, until the morning, uh, good night. Good morning, guys. Oh. Well, that was a very, uh, a very peaceful night's sleep. It ended up not being, um, it ended up not being really breezy at all. It was actually a really calm, oh, calm, nice night. Uh, luckily, nothing poked a hole in my, uh, in my sleeping pad. This gear doctor pad's been going strong now for a hot minute. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just like one of those ideal, um, locations for us you know to do either a debris shelter build or just to do something like this because like you've got this tree back here and there was still the stuff that i lined up along the back right there to a uh, block wind and then the piece that's right underneath you don't know if it's showing up right now is uh you know that would block a bit of wind and if it was raining and you configured this more for rain then that would keep any of the runoff from like backsplashing in here and then all that debris and stuff right there, you know, keeps uh, a little bit of wind. I mean, not much, because it's all, it's so gappy, but you can take it, stack it up and make more of a walk with it. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Um, uh, I just, I'm glad I was able to hurry and get out for this one, because uh, I just wanted to revisit this spot, um, and I'm glad I did. So, as always, I hope you uh, enjoyed watching the video. Um, if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Share the channel and the videos with your friends, family, anybody enjoys the outdoors. Uh, check the links in the description of my other channels and to the products, not affiliate links. Uh, just if you're interested in any of the stuff that I use that I can link to, like as, as in that it's still available or I can find it, it'll be in the comment section. Um, along with the link to the video uh, for the uh, Vault Can Titanium Mess Kit giveaway. So go, go to that video, check out the rules and what you got to do to enter that. 
Oh, but yeah, it's gonna do it for this one. So I'll do the next one, guys. Adios.